Hi everyone. So today's video is really going to be about the Master of Biotechnology program at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. This is more commonly known as the Mbiotech program. And for whichever reason, there isn't a lot of information out there about this program. And um, this was true when I first when I first researched and applied to this program, and it's true today. And as someone who has just graduated from the program and um, all the information about the program is still relevant in my mind, what I want to do is publish it um, so that if you're someone who's just graduated um, and you're looking for things to pursue uh, afterwards, or if you're someone who's already familiar with the program but wants a more in-depth look into what it's all about, I'm hoping this video is a valuable resource for you to better inform your decision on whether you should apply. So in this discussion, what I'll first do is I'll go over the program structure to give you an idea of what this looks like. I'll then talk about the value proposition. So what are some things you can expect from this program personally, professionally, and academically? I will talk about what it takes to get into this program, the admission requirements. I will touch on how much this program will cost you. I will tell you what courses you'll take in this program and what your internships will look like. Finally, I'll wrap up the discussion with my final thoughts on whether this was worth it for me, who I think this program is for, and who I think this program is not for. So this is a two-year program, and it runs from the month of May of year one to April of year two. So for example, if you were to start this year in 2020, your program will begin in May of 2020, and it will end in April of 2022. Uh, in this program, you have a year-long internship. <clears throat> so, for example, if you were to start in 2020, your year-long internship would run from January to December of 2021. Um, throughout the program, you're taking courses. You have one semester in the middle that's a semester where you're not taking courses. Um, so, for example, um, when you first start in May of 2020, from May to the end of the year, you are in courses as if you were like, you know, in undergraduate in an undergraduate program. Um, they're in the day, they're in the evening, and they're they're pretty often during the week. Um, during the internships, so from January to December of 2021, you will have courses in the evening, maybe once or twice a week. Um, in the middle of that year, you have the summer semester off, so you're just working. And then in the last four months of the program from January to April of 2022, um, you still have evening courses. The morning slots are left open if you are continuing your internship with the company or if the company has offered you a full-time job. So that's the scheduling. There are two streams in this program. There is now the biopharma stream and there is the digital health stream. The digital health stream was introduced this year. Um, what's different about it is that it's a smaller group of people, about 10 or 12 students get accepted into the stream, and it's more focused on technology, um, modern technology, in the way that it applies to biotechnology and healthcare. So from what I've seen, the students in this course learn some programming, they learn some analytics, they learn statistics, um, and they also benefit from an internship. And I think the internships themselves are also more catered towards digital health. Prior to this year, um, Mbiotech only had the one stream, which was the Biopharma stream. This is the traditional Mbiotech. This is where you do your courses in science um, and business, and you also have your internship. The Biopharma stream has about 40 students. So collectively in Mbiotech, every year has about a 50 student cohort. So now I'll be talking about the value proposition. I think there's three categories, um, three categories of value that this program offers. I'll start with the academics. So you learn a lot about science in the way that it's applied in a business setting. And I think it's just a whole other, um, it's a whole other field of science that people haven't really delved into in a traditional undergraduate program. Um, so it, it's definitely very interesting. And if you're someone who's got an entrepreneurial mindset and who has the science education, I think it's going to be a very interesting path to go down to see how people make money um, using science. And all the intricate details that are 
that are relevant in that sphere. Um, those are all things that are taught to you in the courses um, offered in Nam Biotech. The second is that is in the realm of personal development. The thing about this program is that you work in teams a lot and you give a lot of presentations. So your ability to speak publicly, your ability to receive and give criticism, and your ability to work in a team with the same people for a very long time, um, all of these skills become honed in this program. And it's something that's gonna, it's gonna stay with you for the rest of your life, I think. And um, they certainly come in, they come very handy, especially in the professional world, and even outside the professional world, where you are at another level when it comes to um, doing these three things, working with people, speaking publicly, and receiving and, give, receiving and giving criticism, constructive criticism. So I think in terms of personal development, those are three key areas where this program will help you. Lastly, and most importantly, is the internship. Everyone is in this program for the internship. There is no other program that offers you the kind of internship and work experience that MBiotech does. There are other biotechnology programs available in Canada. These programs differ in the length of the program and also the quality of the internship. My personal opinion is that out of all the biotechnology programs available in Canada, MBiotech is the best one. The internship is in the pharmaceutical industry for the most part. This is an industry that's very difficult to get into. There's a lot of industry specific knowledge you need before entering the industry in order to even function. And without a program catered to giving you that information, it's very hard to find yourself in the industry. So it's certainly a stepping stone into the industry. It's a shortcut into the industry. And I think that's very, very valuable, especially if you're someone who knows you want to go to the pharmaceutical industry. This is a direct guaranteed path um, in that direction. So that's the most important value proposition of the program is the internship. And I'm going to get into that in more detail um, later in this video. So in order to get into this program, there are a few requirements, obviously. And what I'll do is I'll simply walk you through the main components in order to get admitted. So what they look at is the last two years of your undergraduate degree. Your undergraduate degree has to be in any area of the biological sciences, chemistry, or related fields. And in those last two years, you need a minimum 75% average, which is a B. Although in the incoming students, so people who have been accepted, they've had somewhere between 83 and 85% average in the last two years of their program. So that's one component. You also need, um, you need three letters of recommendation. You need a letter of intent, which is like your personal statement, and you'll have to submit a resume slash um, CV. So that, that's the application package. Once you've submitted that, they call you in for an interview. Um, I'll make a separate video. I can make a separate video on what the interview looks like if someone is interested. If you do well in the interview, they will then call you back um, and you're in the program. So those are the, so those are the admission requirements. Um, for domestic candidates. If you're international, I think there are some additional requirements you may have. Um, I can't personally speak to those right now because I'm, you know, I'm just not familiar. But what I would do is if you look up MBiotech admission requirements, international applicant, you'll find a web page where those are listed out in pretty good detail. So those are the requirements. It's typically based on your grades um, and your letter of intent. Um, I think those are the two more important things. The letters of reference are just used as you know proof, proof of concept kind of that you are not crazy. Um, but yeah, the, the grades and your um, your letter of intent is the main thing. And then the interview is you know an interview. It's 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 a long interview. It's a full day thing. But again, that's something I can get into um, in the next video if someone is interested. So those are the admission requirements. So now I'm gonna talk about the cost of the program. So the cost is different if you are a domestic applicant versus an international applicant. I'm gonna run with the assumption that you are someone in Canada, um, you're a Canadian citizen. So you'd be a domestic applicant and the price you would pay for the program over the course of two years is $40,000. It's $20,000 per year. Um, now that is the ticket price, but what happens is if, for example, um, you receive OSAP, 
the OSAP grant money can be in the volume of several thousand dollars. So that's going to drop the price. There are also several scholarships available to you that you can apply for and receive. Um, also in the quantity of several thousand dollars that can, again, reduce the price even further. To give you an example, every student in my class and the students in the class before me received a financial um, financial aid bursary of $3,000 from the program. I don't know why they gave it to us or you know what the, what the rationale was, but this was just something we received. Um, so in terms of affordability, I think it's affordable. Um, in my case, I received several thousands, several thousand dollars worth of OSAP grants in addition to the $3,000 financial aid bursary. So the total cost of my program was somewhere, you know, much less than $40,000, which I think for a master's degree, um, if you compare to other countries and, and other schools, um, it's, it's on the more affordable side for a degree. Um, if you're international, you can expect to pay double those prices. So the ticket price for a domestic applicant is the $40,000. If you are coming from abroad, you can expect to pay somewhere in the realm of $80,000 for those two years. So that's the cost of the program. Um, that being said, um, the internship is paid, and I'll, I'll get into more of that later. And I think it's interesting to know that when you walk out of this program, you're not actually, you're in a better financial position than you might expect to be. And again, I'll touch more on this when I talk about the internships near the end of this video. Okay, so now let's talk more about the courses in the MBiotech program. So I'm not gonna walk you through every single course that uh, we have taken, but what I'll do is I'll kind of walk you through the buckets that they fall into to give you a general idea of what categories um, you can expect to be taught. So um, I'm gonna run through this list of categories and then I'll, 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 touch in, I'll touch on some of them in more detail. So, you know, you have science labs and science lectures. So this is predominantly in the first semester of the program um, from, from May to September. The, that first summer semester, you're going to be primarily in science labs and science lectures. Um, this is the only portion of the program where you have science labs. After this, you're done with labs. Um, possibly for the rest of your life, which for some of you is a hallelujah. It was certainly a hallelujah for me. You also have courses in accounting. You have courses in finance, marketing, economics, and innovation. A lot of these are very interesting courses. Some of these courses are entirely like discussion-based. So there's a lot of, there's like, it's kind of like the Socratic method, which is good. It's not always just the teacher writing stuff on the board and you copying it down and, and doing tests. It's much more engaging than that, and that was really refreshing for me to see. You have courses um, that are seminar-based, so they have people from the industry, people from companies, scientists, um, entrepreneurs, um, venture capitalists. Diverse, diverse people come to the class and give presentations on certain topics, things that they do. It's a great way to meet people who are out there and doing things that you might want to do. Um, certainly very informative. We have courses about biotechnology in the way that it's applied in medicine and in agriculture. And lastly, we have other we have courses um, that they've called biopartnering. These are courses where you work in your team, and you are given a healthcare problem, and you are you're given a few several weeks to put together a comprehensive solution to that problem and present it to a dragon's den, which is made up of you know um, other students in your class or the class above you. So the Dragon's Den, I think this is a running theme in the program is that you work in your team a lot and you give presentations with your team a lot. So to give you an example, um, you're first assigned a team when you first enter the program in, in May and you work with that team until for the first summer semester. So those, you know, May till September, you work in that team in the science labs and the science lectures. And after after that initial summer semester, you know, that's just to give you the feel of what it's like to work in a team, to then switch up the teams. Your second team is what you work with for the rest of the program. So from September of that first year until April of, until graduation, you're with that second team the entire time. And in every single course, I think, you know, based on what I remember, every single course, um, you work with your team to 
on, on several projects. And they almost always involve some kind of presentation. And uh, that's a running theme in the program. And so the biopartnering courses, which are like the Dragon's Den courses, um, it's just a more emphasized, it's just a more emphasized um, theme um, that, that is prevalent throughout this entire program. So I think that's very important to know is that all these courses are, are team-based. You work with your team a lot. You give a lot of presentations. Um, and you, know, you and the rest of the class are going to learn a lot of different things. Um, it truly is science and business and also the intersection between science and business. So these are the courses. Um, you can get a list of the actual courses themselves by simply Googling and biotech courses, and they will tell you what the core courses are. In addition to that, you have the choice of several, several electives that you can take at your choosing. These electives can be in things like analytics. They can be in things like commerce. I myself took a Robin course um, in downtown. Um, you have more discussion-based courses. There's a great course called Gambit that I took, which is in downtown Toronto as well. I'll make separate videos. Um, if people are interested, I can delve more in, in detail into these courses and whether they're worth it um, and what they look like. But certainly the education you receive is diverse, it's varied, it's very engaging, and uh, you can expect to learn a lot of different things in this program that you would not have learned in any um, undergraduate program, uh, that's for sure. Okay, so now let's talk about the internships. Um, this, is the, this is the main part about the program, and everyone who's in this program is in it for the internship, and that's a good thing. There's not a lot of programs that offer you the kind of internship and work experience that M Biotech does. <clears throat> so what these internships look like is, um, you know, what I'll start with first is how you get the internships. So the way they do this is that there's like a, there's an application period in which there's a first round and there's also a second round. And these occur in the fall of the first year. So this would be like the first October, first November, when you first start the program. What you do is they offer you a list of jobs. You know, the, the, the program is partnered with a bunch of companies and the companies tell the program, hey, we have these jobs open that your M Biotech students can apply to. So you have a list of these jobs and you apply to several of them um, as broadly and as, you know, as many as possible. And you submit your resume and your cover letter. And um, if the company likes you, they call you in for an interview, you interview for them just as you would for any other job. And then what happens after the interview is the company will rank you and you will rank the company and the program will try and match the company with the applicant. And they'll try and get, you know, as close to a good match as possible based on their rankings. Um, in the first round, between 25 and 30 of the 40 people um, will match. Um, and the remaining 10 or 15 people will match in the second round. The second round will have additional job postings. They'll have job postings that weren't filled in the first round, and almost everyone uh, gets matched in the second round. You do have an oddball here or there where one or two people um, don't match in the first or second round, but from what I've seen, these individuals typically match before it's time to start the internships in that first January. So, the internships in terms of um, what they look like, the majority of them are in the pharmaceutical industry. So, and, and the ones that are not in the pharmaceutical industry are in firms or agencies that work with pharmaceutical companies. So no matter what, you're gonna be linked to the pharmaceutical industry. Um, the categories that these internships fall into are very diverse. You can have things in marketing, you can have things in finance, regulatory, medical affairs, medical information, data analytics, um, market access, sales even sometimes. Um, and, and I think those are, the, those are the major categories. And a lot of people will end up somewhere in that realm. The main point here is that what you, what you can do in your internships is very diverse. There's definitely something that will fit what you're looking for. The advice is to apply as broadly as possible so you can start to explore what it is you're interested in. If your internship is not something you find interesting, you can certainly pivot because you're still very early on, early on in your career. Um, the internships, they pay very well. They are um, typically in the realm of 45 
to $53,000 for that internship. And this is, everyone in the class falls in that range. You don't get benefits. It's a one year, so some, it's a typically a one year contract. Um, once the contract is over, people sometimes get contract extensions. Um, sometimes they get offered an, another full-time job. Um, if they don't have anything lined up, um, they're still able to, you know, the advice then is to apply for a job afterwards, um, just as you would in any other situation. So that's the internships. Um, the internships themselves are very good. Uh, you know, I personally interviewed with several companies and I, I liked the atmosphere. There are a lot of embiotechs in the Canadian pharmaceutical industry. So when you're interviewing for these companies or if, when you're at these companies, you'll find a lot of people who have done the embiotech program. So it's kind of like a big family. Uh, which is great to see. And, you know, I think I think the quality of the internship and how much you get paid and, and um, the length of the internship is something that really differentiates and biotech. I, something I touched upon earlier in this video was the financial outcome when you're done this program. You know, the, the cost of the program, if you're in Canada, can be when you include OSAP and when you include bursaries, the cost of the program can be you know, much less than $40,000. What you're making in the program is in the realm of, you know, it can be upwards of 50 or $60,000. If you work that full year and the four months, the remaining four months, um, you can make up the cost of the program and, and pay off a huge portion of it um, after your living expenses and things like that. So from a financial practical perspective, this is the internship is, is the thing about the program. Um, it's a great way to get your foot in the door into the pharmaceutical industry. Um, it's a hard industry to get into. Um, it's a tight knit industry. So there's a lot of networking involved, um, which is good. And uh, yeah, the internships have been great. And if you want to read more about the internships and what some of my experiences have been like in the industry, I recommend you head over to my blog. I'll, I'll put the link in the description and you can read more about what my internship has looked like. Um, I personally was at Estellas Pharma. Estellas Pharma. Um, it's a Japanese multinational company. They have an office here in Canada, and that's where I did my internship in data analytics and then in market access. So you can read about that on my website. Otherwise, in a nutshell, internships are very good. They pay well. Um, it's a full year. You learn a lot. You are you become very connected um, in terms of your network. And it's just a very, very rich learning experience, and it's a great way to start your career. So now let's talk about the final thoughts. Do I think this program was worth it? I think it's worth it for some people, and it's not worth it for other people. Um, for the former, I think if you're someone who's looking for something to do after your undergraduate, and um, you want something more than just you know a, a PhD or a master's, which are science-based, and if, if you don't want to do medicine, for example, or pharmacy, and you do really have that business mindset, then this is for you. I think this program is for you because um, it's going to satisfy that craving for business education and business experience, but still keep you in touch with the sciences. And um, that was my situation. I did my bachelor's at UTM, the University of Toronto, Mississauga, and I studied, I had the Bachelor of Science and um, I had an interest in business, so I went to Embiotech, and I think it really scratched that itch for me. So if you fall in that cohort, that's good. I also think that if you're someone who's already working in the industry, but you want to bolster your, um, if you want to improve your candidacy for more senior roles, or if you want to just, you know, you know, professionally and personally develop to re-enter the industry, you can do that as well. I know a few people who are already in the industry who then took a step back to this program and are now re-entering with this new designation and new experience. So that's certainly possible too. So I think if you fit in those two cohorts, um, this is a program for you. However, I do think that if you're someone who's who wants to be entrenched in the sciences, if you want research experience, if you want if you see yourself in R and D, then this might not be for you. The reason I say that is because although you do learn a lot about you know, how R&D is involved in the commercialization process, the jobs you end up with are not R&D jobs. I think there are a few available, but the majority, I think everyone in, in my program and the year before me, very, almost no one 
um, went into an R&D role. And so I think if you if, if that's your end destination, you may not get there with this program. And so I would not recommend it. That being said, I do think the program is if you're an entrepreneurial research scientist, if you want to, you know, innovate a new drug or, um, you know, some new science related technology and you need research in order to do that. I think, you know, I, I do think you are better off with a research master's or a Ph.D., but to I think the the knowledge of how to commercialize yourself and what you've what you've built, that's something you learn in the program. But I think for you, you might have to get that information from somewhere else. Um, so I think that's a bit of a nuanced situation. But I think the, the what I'm trying to say here is that if you want to be in R&D, this might not be the path for you. Um, but I think that's another discussion on what on what is available for you. So those are my final thoughts. That being said, if you're someone who's interested in this program and who wants to apply but doesn't, but who needs help getting there, um, I want to make myself available. Please feel free to leave a comment, um, reach out on LinkedIn, or send me an email. I'll try and help you as best as possible. In addition, if there's something I haven't covered in this video, and you have a question about that please leave a comment and I'll do my best to address it as best as I can. So I hope this helps. I hope this adds to the body of knowledge about Ambiotech and raises awareness. I think it's a good program that many people just don't know about. And I think it's really being slept on. So, so yeah. Um, thank you for watching.